friend of mine, Myers Fanatic, pointed out in his review of this film, Jason was actually in Manhattan in the last one. Not entirely sure how he got to Crystal Lake again. I don't know, maybe he teleported. As we see the car moving down the road, we see the sign and... Oh no! It's going to Westport! Or Crystal Lake, I guess. It was pretty cool how they just blew him apart in the opening. You know, all the guns, I think there was at least one mounted machine gun in there, and we only see the muscle flash from it, but it sounded like a mounted machine gun. And then, firing the hole, they drop a bomb on him, quite literally. I guess that's why Jason, or the spirit of Jason, or whatever, settles for Jasonifying the coroner. You know, it would be kind of difficult for him to just put all those pieces back together, I guess. You need a lot of crazy glue, at least. Did anybody else think, you know, when those teenagers are you know, jumping out of the water and they say, Oh God, that water, that they really should have continued, Thank God it's only cold and not wet. Literally, their clothes did not look wet. Even a little. There were some pretty creative kills in this one. I quite liked the vertical slashing of the chick on top of that guy. And the knocking in of the mouth of that obnoxious bitch. That was really satisfying. I think they knew that that was what we wanted to see, and that's what we got. You know, shut her right up. And in general, the, the attacks were really exciting. There wasn't a lot of a stalking thing going on, but they had kind of abandoned that for Jason anyway. So they were just doing the very powerful, intimidating attacks. And even when it wasn't technically Jason, you know, when it wasn't Kane Hodder doing it, it was still quite terrifying. I did not know that Stephen Culp could be terrifying. Or at least a little scary. It's kind of interesting that the rebirth goes by so quickly, and that he comes out looking the exact same as he did earlier in the movie. The demonic Jason form, you know, that little critter running around, that wasn't bad. And I really hadn't seen the, the twist, I suppose, coming that he was going to use the dead mother, you know, because we didn't know if it... You know, and then, yeah, then that other dude asks the bounty hunter, you know, does it need to be a living relative of Jason, or could it be a dead one, because her body's right down there, you know, because Stephen Culp went and stole the body and then laughed maniacally about it because he's a Bond villain all of a sudden. Isn't it interesting that when that cop who was housing Jason you know, the one that the coroner shaved and then kissed? Well, I guess he puked the dark heart of Jason Voorhees into his mouth. There's a sentence I never thought I'd say. The, the cop, you know, he, he sort of melts, he does a little interpretive dancing, then he dies. Again, really great effects. That looked very good. The, he drops the, you know, his jaw and the whole... They had some really, really good effects in this one. Maybe the best of the first nine films, I'd say. And yes, you know, the film isn't as old as the others, so, you know, there's, there's that, and maybe also budget, but still, they really, they really did well on it. And I think they did good on hiding things that didn't work as well, like the dummy of demonic Jason. In that show of Stephen Culp's, he asks for incontrovertible evidence of Jason. There isn't incontrovertible evidence of Jason's existence yet. He was seen by several people in Manhattan, and there are survivors of the other films, you know, plenty of witnesses, and, you know, 
leftovers from the attacks, what do they think that was? And, you know, snooning McBritish certainly believed that Jason had once existed in you know, Jason Takes Manhattan. How exactly did the knife go flying from her hand? I thought it was stabbed inside of that cop on top of her, and then suddenly it's flying off to the side. When it dropped beneath the floorboards, I was thinking, oh, come on, you know, that's just... That is so typical of a slasher flick, or sometimes in general horror. The object that is supposed to be the only thing that can kill the bad guy, you know, keeps going away from them. It just... They were kind of toying with us, toying with us at this point, you know, and having some fun with the overall, you know, concept. I think they did better in this one than in Jason Takes Manhattan, which, let's be honest, was more silly. I also found the two guys aiming at each other kind of funny, you know. I have a gun, I have a gun too, and then, you know, they're aiming at each other, just, yeah. Jason is a moron. Seriously, there at the end, he did not need to spend that much time on, I don't know, the football guy, I don't remember his name. He, you know, that guy could not have killed him, and it's not like he was constantly slowing Jason down, in that scene at least. You know, dude, there's a knife that can kill you, and there's a single person that can kill you. Focus on them first. Anyway, those were my thoughts on Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. Hope you enjoyed it.